We need choice in our life. Without it, we'll feel like we're stuck, that we don't really know what it is that we're doing because we have to be doing one certain thing, right? Like a Hobson's choice, choice, take it or leave it. We either got to do it or we're going to die, right? And, you know, of course, that's not really rational, but how often do we do that with ourselves? Do we set ourselves these ultimatums that we give ourselves one choice? The one choice is we either have to work out today or our life is going to end or we're a complete utter failure. We have to talk to this person. Otherwise, we can't love ourselves, right? Which isn't true, but we set this up for ourselves. We set ourselves up in this dilemma, right? And we basically put ourselves between a rock and a hard, hard place, right? This is Morton's fork. And we got to be really aware of this stuff because the issue is, is not that we have to decide between two equally bad competing alternatives, but that maybe it's possible that there are other options that we haven't considered yet or we haven't even thought of, right? They might be right in front of our eyes or they might be something that we need to create. So that's what I want to talk to you about is adding options to your choices, right? So, so often people end up in this situation where they think to themselves, ah, oh, crap, like, I either have to do this one thing, which I don't really want to do, right? And then otherwise I get this other really bad consequence that I don't really want to get. It's like a shadow pulls us towards a, or pushes us towards a firewall and we're stuck. We either have to make a choice to jump through it or to, uh, or to, or to fight it. Like for example, it's kind of like, you know, the, the evil monster edging you towards the cliff. Do you jump off the cliff or do you deal with the evil monster? Well, what I want to offer is maybe there's an alternative. Maybe it's not just a two-dimensional plane, but it's three-dimensional. And you can exit out the Z-axis. And you can just get the heck out of there. I mean, just think if there's something in your life that you're making into this, uh, into this dichotomy, that, into a, a, a fight, a false dialectic, or excuse me, uh, a false dilemma. False dilemma. Not a true dilemma, right, but a false one because you have more than one choice, more than two choices. And obviously there's a lot I could say about this. So for example, you might be thinking to yourself that your only two choices are to um, talk to your boss and, uh, and uh, ask for a raise or to sit quietly and suffer, right, to sit quietly and suffer. But the issue is, is that maybe your choices are a little bit more than that. You already know what you don't want. You know the path you don't want to walk down. And maybe that's the path that you walk down more often than not. So you take it in, you withdraw, and you don't ask for what you want. That's not good. That leads to cancers. Cancers both metaphorically and physically. Cancers that grow on our relationship so much so until our relationship all of a sudden dies. Or parts of ourselves and our spirits die, right? Maybe depressions can oftentimes come from us building these cancers of resentment all over ourselves, so much so that we have to basically kill a part of ourselves. Or they get so big that, again, a part of ourselves dies. We don't want that. That doesn't sound very good to me, and it doesn't sound very good at all. So you're in this situation. What do you do about it? Well, I mean, you could get stuck in this Morton's Fork, like, oh, now I got to do something that I don't want to do, and, uh, uh, or suffer the consequences of not doing it. Yeah, that's pretty bad, right? But what else can you add to this situation, right? Well, maybe you can change one of the options, right? Maybe you can change one of the options from, oh, asking for a raise to just having a conversation with your boss about how you're feeling about your work, right? You see how that kind of changes it a little bit? So for example, when I meet a lot of guys who are, you know, trying to talk to women or trying to talk to strangers or girls trying to talk to guys, a lot of it, a lot of their problems end up in they're looking for the result too quickly. They're going, I want to have sex with this person. And I go, whoa, 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 hold on. You don't even know if you like them. It might be a crazy psychopath, you know? 
or you might have crazy chemistry with them. You have no idea before you talk to them, but what happens is that you've sold yourself short by trying to sell yourself too early or trying to buy them too early because you don't know what you're getting, right? I mean, you don't know if they have a boyfriend, they're in a loving relationship, or if they're, you know, gay. You have no idea, right? So instead, start small. Make a small first step. For example, like, oh, all I'm going to do is say hi to this person, right? All I'm going to do is sit down and talk to this person and just, you know, uh, uh, say something to them. Just say one thing and strike up a conversation. That people can do with no thought of anything more than that. Just that one bottom line thing, no end in mind, right? So for the boss, it's not with the end in mind of asking for a raise, but more with the thought of having a conversation. And, you know, during that conversation, expressing yourself and how you feel about your job. Hey, look, Bob, I've been doing a lot of really great work for this company, and I'm feeling kind of underappreciated. You know, I, feel, I see all these other people, and they make more money than I do, and it's important to me to be supported for the work that I do and to feel truly valued. And I feel like I've been undervalued, right? So you're not even necessarily asking for what you want from this person. You're stating how you feel, right? And then later you can state what you want. But another issue is that most people think that just by their mere wants alone, they're demanding things. Or that sets up some expectation that the other person has to change. No way. Back up from that. Just because you want something doesn't mean anything. You're just expressing what you want. And look, I mean, this can happen so much in our relationships where we have wants and desires, but we sell them short. I mean, last night I was talking with my girlfriend. We had some big fight because we had wants which we weren't expressing with each other. We downplayed them because we said, oh, we're supposed to be these like accommodating, spiritual, sweet, loving people. So we can't put that upon anyone else. We don't want anyone else to change. And it's true. I don't want anyone not to change. I don't want Courtney to change. And Courtney doesn't want me to change. Right? But that's not it. What's it is that by expressing our wants, we're not forcing the other person to change. We're allowing ourselves to be satisfied. We're giving ourselves respect. So there's more I can say about this, but I want to end with just making a little caveat. And that's that I'm saying we should add choices to our life. We should add freedom and mobility because oftentimes when we don't have any choices, we feel paralyzed and restrained. But the converse of that is that if you have too many choices, you can also feel paralyzed and restrained. So there's a steady balance and a subtle balance between these two things that's really important to hit and to master. So much love many blessings, and don't get caught under Morton's fork.